What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Kazu, and this is the Urban Influencer Radio. Today, we have another exciting episode featuring interviews with Kimar Thompson and Reggie of Marx Media featuring Blaze. Just wanted to let you guys know that we got social media, so if you enjoy this episode, then don't forget to follow and subscribe to our channel. Links are in the description box below. Let's kick this off with an interview with Kimar Thompson on the Urban Influencer Radio. Okay, I'm ready. Bless, bless, bless. What's up? What's up? Kazoo Radio. <laughs> as, I, 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 as they would say in my country, Wagwan. Yeah, man. Everything blessed? Yeah, everything good. How how's uh, How's everything with you? Yeah, everything good, everything good. I'm looking even better since I released this track, Dreamland, and I'm about to drop my new album. Everything is looking way up. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely excited about that. I'm like, you must be too. Uh, where are you right now? Um, right now I'm in Baltimore. I'm finishing up some work. Um, I, I also have a, a EP coming out, which is a different genre. It's a dancehall EP. I was working on it uh, previously, but I kind of like put it back to put put more effort into the album so now that the album is finished up and all of that and this the, the lead single is out and it's on the charts and stuff i took the time out to come back to baltimore to finish up my my ep baltimore okay do you do you ever do any recording in Jama- jamaica at all or yes i was born in jamaica yeah no, of I, was, course, yes. I was born and grew and raised in jamaica you know what i mean i'm big up every jamaican where i listen right now too you see me yeah i was born in kingston jamaica queensborough uh, Meadowbrook area, you know, and um, spend most of my time there. I've been in America like eight years now, uh-huh. um, pursuing uh, 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 my bigger dreams, as 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 you all would know that by now. You know, I mean, everybody leave a smaller country after after making waves in your country. I mean, if you have a bigger mind, you you try to explore. It. So, I've been on that mission for a minute for for like eight years now. Yeah, no, definitely. I I want to definitely get to know. Uh... A, a bit more about you and you grew up in uh, a household where um, where you were surrounded by music correct yes yes um no I, I was surrounded by music but it was it, only my daddy was a, a, an entertainer oh, okay and he was a, a, a very he became a very huge name in the reggae industry uh, many jamaicans if you're a jamaican you know of pinchers that's his name pinchers right. pinchers okay yeah. And that's where the name Junior Pinchers come from. Exactly. Because of your exactly. father. Exactly. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, I was reading a little bit about, um, you know, just just your bio, just to get to know you, and you know, it was talking about how you used to use people would ask you to request to sing songs, and uh, would you be able to tell me a little bit more about that, like where people like request you in schools and at church and stuff? Yes, because um, at that time in Jamaica, my father was popular and. Um, um, I used to go into the the, the the hills where my mommy comes from, where that's uh, St. Catherine Hills, mm-hmm. which is a place called Rock Hall. I used to, uh, um, that's where I used to go to, to, to visit my mom on the weekends and stuff. So, and every time I go there, because my dad was so famous, everybody would be pushing me to sing. I, I really do, do not want to sing because that's the last thing I want to do because I think everybody's just pushing me because my father is a singer. Right. But I knew I had the talent to sing, and and most people that's in my immediate circle knew that. Uh-huh. So um, occasionally they would they would my friends my my friends would push me and say yeah sing a song and whatever. And every time I I sing it would turn into an uproar and whatever. Um, so one of my friends took it took the initiative to say they don't want me to sing for free anymore, and right. they started to charge everybody that 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 they that they, they that asked me to sing. Right. You get me? Yeah, so it, it became something like everywhere I went now, it's like people just keep asking me. I went to church and people is asking me to sing, to sing that, that, that same song over and over again. You get what I'm saying? And yeah. it was a church song that I loved. I see. So like, but but at first, like, since since uh, your since your dad is like a very well-known artist in Jamaica, like, you didn't want to be stated, uh, you didn't want to be like kind of labeled as like an artist or anything like that at first, but... No, no. Okay. It was a soul. The, all of this uh, music stuff came. It was, it was authentic to me because I tried so hard to steer the opposite. You get me? Right. And um, no matter what I did, it just captivated me and 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 life and and it. it I would be stupid not to follow the the, the signs. You get right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I just took it up and and in 2000. 
uh, five, that's when I, I, I really start, um, going hard at it, at it, going into the studios, um, telling my daddy, yeah, yo, daddy, I'm ready. I want to, I want to record. Um, um, if you go into the studio, let me know I'm coming X, Y, Z. He started to take me overseas and on a few shows. I started doing good on those shows, uh, requesting with us back and we go back again and do a nice show and it just start expanding from there. And, um, it came to a point where I, I had to make a, a drastic decision because um, I think um, being around my daddy was was very big for me and a, was a great help. But I needed outside. Um, um, I need I need I need experience on my own, um, if I may say. Yeah. Um, I was I was too sheltered. I felt like you get so so. Um, I took I took it upon myself to go and live with my mommy at the age of seventeen. Nice. Yeah, and from there I started. It was hard, no doubt. It was hard because it's it's not it, 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 it's 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 grounds that I normally go for a weekend. It's easy to go for a weekend. It's very fun, but when you stop there, it's a whole different situation. There's no money circulating. It's not the same situation that I am used to at home, and I had to adjust. Uh, I had to adjust vastly to that situation and I did so and it made me the pe- the person that I, I I turned out to be right now because of all that 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 learning experience and having the other side to 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 use while I'm in that that that, that to, to 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 solve the puzzle you get what I'm trying to say yeah like it was it yeah it was a it was a um it was a big learning experience for me going back to my mom and I think it's it's that that create that burning desire in me to keep going. You get what I'm trying to say? And it crafted that that yeah. me my own brand. Ah, uh, yeah, I get you. So then, like, it, in order to kind of create your like own brand, like, because I know I know like uh, you like people like people also people knows you for as like Junior Pincher, but then like you decided to recently change it to Keymar Thompson to kind of like create. To kind of like let people know that like this is who you are, or no, I came out to come about come about because of the the, the it's just like um, I have many different styles. Um, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, uh, because sometimes you just you just you you don't know where to stay uh, consistent. But um, the 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 realer side of me. Is that art? Uh, is that dreamland sound? That 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 authentic music? That 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 um that reflect reflecting music? Um that 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 love music? That that, that real and Kemara Thompson is actually my real name. So I decided, whenever doing projects that 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 is related to that 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 real vibe, I I normally um label it underneath Kemara Thompson. Uh, Kemar Thompson is a different, um, as you may say, my alter ego. I see. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I wanted to talk a little, talk a little bit about the, uh, you know, like you mentioned, Dreamland. You know, which is a, which is a great song, by the way. And we'll be playing the, uh, the track, you know, right after this interview. But uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, uh, how you came up with the song and, and the recording process of it? Yes. Um, it was very. It was an interesting um, process and project. Um, it, it actually was partly written, uh, mostly written by my producer, Elizabeth Bernard, and the producer of this song and the album. Um, she went to California, um, to Colorado on a trip and, and, and had a dream and woke up, wrote down what um, uh, a part of the song as an idea yeah. because of how intense the dream was. Um, it, it, it brought certain realization to her, so she sent, she wrote exactly what she felt down on the paper, and and texted it to me, and from there I, I I thought it was a great idea, it was a brilliant idea, right. um, and I think it's necessary in the in these times now that it's all these the, these kids are trying to put out these pro tools, um, uh, not not pro tools, um, this this auto tune sounding stuff and all these 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 um gibberish rap and all of that stuff. I think this is a time where more real music is needed. So I I I, I jumped on that immediately because I love that idea, and right. I think it's game changing. So um, from there I started to expand the idea. We linked up and we start putting the pieces together. And yep, there you go, Dreamland. It's it's basically a song that um, takes you inside the dream world, explains 
mm-hmm. what happens in the dream. You know what I mean? It takes you on a, a, on a little trip. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, I, de- I definitely understand. Yeah, you know, you got you got some like new music like coming up this year, and you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure like things are really exciting for you right now. But are you planning on like possibly doing like more shows or like maybe like tour or stuff, anything like that for this year? Yes, we have we have we have we have a tour, a backing tour lined up for the album, um, for Dreamland. We're just um, setting up right now. We're in the setting up stage. So yeah, you can look for me all over the place. We'll be everywhere in a, in a few. Yeah, no, that that's really exciting. Cool, cool, cool. Now before um before I wrap this uh, interview up, I want to just like ask you like uh, one more thing, and then like we'll go ahead and play a uh, Dreamland. But uh, is there um you know because you got the album coming out and like planning on playing more shows this year, but is there um a- anything else you want to accomplish uh, before this year ends, like personally? Before the the, the year ends, um, I I I honestly want want to reach a bigger audience so i could uh, um express myself in and 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 have people view my perspectives in music um that's that's basically my aim to become somebody that that that's actually um recognized in uh, on, the, on the on the world stage as a, as a, as a as a great musician that's my my goals i see yeah no that's no, and I, we'll I, take it from there. Okay. Yeah. That sounds that sounds good. No, and I, I hope I hope you reached a big audience and you know, and I'm really happy that you were able to get on this show. So like, you know, I want I want your music to reach more people and uh once again, uh So what's on. your honest opinion? What do you feel about the song? What's your vibe over there? I, I enjoy it. You know, I mean like I, I didn't I didn't like personally like grow up on grow up on reggae or anything like that, but like to me like you know, I'm a I'm a lover of music and especially with like like you say like because you know how like a lot of like a lot of the trap stuff and like you say gibberish rap or whatever like you know it's it, it start it's starting to like you know at first it was pretty cool but like little by little it's starting to sound the same so like it's just deteriorating the music industry and and, and sending the wrong signal um it's it, it's cool sometimes a joke is funny but for how long you get what i'm trying to say yeah so of course, um yeah. i think it's just creating um it's sending the wrong information out there and it's and it's breaking down the standards that needs to be kept and there is no there is no filtration happening um, right. and 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 i think i um, think stronger artists um artists that, that 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 has real music to offer to the world should should push more harder to put good put good music on the shelves just as these guys that are putting those garbage out because they don't think they're putting out garbage and not standing behind it and promoting it to the 100 percent or 150 percent so as a good artist you can't just sit back and say yo you're waiting for for the right opportunity or you just think you're that good that it's just gonna happen naturally or whatever you gotta take you gotta jump on it and you gotta make it happen just to see him you know what i mean what it is i in my eyes it's good against bad yeah, no, that's that, that's definitely that's definitely true. Like the whole thing you were talking about with the fil- that how like there really isn't like a filtration. Like it's kind of like whatever draws like the most audience. Like I, I guess like that's where a lot of like the musical atmosphere is basically depended on. So like you know, so like and a lot of the times like it just ends up being like a lot of those trap things. And like you know, sure, I mean I I like I like a good amount of artists within that genre, but it's like you know some but sometimes it, it like, gets crazy. It yeah, gets crazy. It is yeah, crazy. Yeah. It, and, and sometimes you just need some something different and something fresh, you know. So it's like that's and why. And it's just like uh, it's just what department and people. Um, sometimes uh, you know what happens too. Sometimes I see a good artist trying to change himself to be like a a a, a comedian artist or or some somebody in that line. I mean, to me, it's entertainment. Mm-hmm. But you have artists in in that genre of entertainment which is more more of the serious part of what's happening there yeah at the show you get what i'm trying to say you could have bozo the clone on the show you could have all these other activities still entertainment you get what i'm trying to say yeah i get but how far is that gonna go on how serious and how impact how how much of a positive impact does that have to your life i mean you're actually you're, you're always gonna revert to the good good stuff at the end of the day yeah, do you do you um listen to like any modern like artists right now like uh, like Kendrick Lamar or like um Yeah, I listen to a lot of Kendrick Lamar. I listen to a lot of um a lot of them. But I'm um, I'm not just talking I'm I'm talking overall like I think too much 
too much of the um the cartoon stuff is is out there the bubblegum stuff the the, the, the cheesy <laughs> you get what i'm trying to say no nobody everybody's try, it's easier to spoil a kid than to raise them right and i feel like everybody is trying to spoil the kids Dude, that's real talk. Yeah, it's easy. It's a lot. It's a lot easier to spoil the kid than yeah. Yeah, they know. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. <laughs> well, that's true. Even man. if they have the talent to 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 train them or, or give them information that could lead them into a right direction, uh, it's gonna take too much out of them. So they prefer this this make a fool consumerism or whatever caused people to uh, are be more susceptible to being man- manipulated and and many of the artists are jumping on that bandwagon. Yeah, that's it's it's a it's a bandwagon for sure. You know, it's kind of like whatever the trend is. Like we're just gonna like ride on it and see how far it's gonna stick. I mean, it's not gonna be like long lasting, but they're at least like making a lot of money, so they're just doing it. You know, it's kind of yeah, and that, and that that doesn't say a lot. Yeah, right. and that's not everything is not about money. You get me? Because at the end of the, the, everything, to uh, the, the the most important thing in life is the end result of something. Mm-hmm. So at the end, at the end, this guy is making money for what? What is going? What is it gonna end up being? Um, um, the, 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 it, it's, it's one, two, three. I mean, everybody knows. Mm-hmm. You get me? Yeah, yeah, that's garbage. It's going to end up in the trash. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, man. No, I, I'm definitely like looking forward to, um, hearing more stuff from you and also, uh, yeah, and also come to LA and play some shows here too. Like, yeah, we got, we, we have, we, we, we have a few things set up in LA. Don't worry. We got it. Definitely. Um let's link up. Let's yeah, and just keep pumping the music on, on the radio station and um so the the, the fans can get more more Kemar Thompson slash JR Pinchers and look out for great music, more great music. Look out for Dreamland album is dropping soon and I can guarantee you it's amazing music that you won't regret listening to. Promise. No, definitely. Thank you so much, Kemar, for joining us, man, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. And it's Kemar, okay? Kemar, oh Jesus. K E M A R Thompson. Kemar Thompson. Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you so much. <laughs> no man, everything good, everything good. Bless, bless, bless. Yeah, bless. And everybody, you're listening to the number one Katsu radio, right? Yeah, Urban Influence Radio, but I go with Kazu Radio. I'm down with that. Uh, all right, straight like that. And it's your boy JR Pinchers, Kemar Thompson. Look for my new single, Dreamland, on iTunes and all media outlets. Online, offline, we everywhere. And if you want to search up my music, just type K E M A R T H O M P S O N and Dreamland. Okay? Dope. Thank you very much for having me. All right, thanks. Take my hand. Let's go to Dreamland, a beautiful place I hope you know all of your friends Will be in Dreamland and even some You might know all your hopes, all your fears Will be represented here You don't need a ticket here Memories are your receipt You can face your demons here You don't know that you're asleep Oh, 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 oh Am I dreaming? Oh, 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 oh. Am I dreaming? place I hope you know all of your friends will be in dreamland and even some you might know oh oh
people yet very much alive You might be sailing or maybe you fly You might be falling but you cannot die If you ever crash in dreamland you never feel the pain And if you die in dreamland never go again That was Dreamland by Kemar Thompson. Next, we have an interview with Reggie and Blaze on the Urban Influencer Radio. All right. Reggie, how's it going? Going great, man. I'm glad to, uh, glad to be talking with you here, finally. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, fi- it's fi- finally the time is here, so it's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Blaze. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, welcome to uh, welcome to the Urban Influencer Radio. It's really awesome that you guys are joining us today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, good. yeah. I wanted to talk with uh, just, uh, just Reggie like very quickly. You know, kind of wanted to get to know a little bit about um, your background. But um, how did you uh, first get into producing? Um, I uh, I actually was uh, working as a uh, part time as a backing musician and. Uh, I I started uh I guess about 15 years ago started uh just laying I'm primarily a guitarist so I primarily start uh on I had a old two track cassette yeah and uh I started just making some guitar tracks on that two uh that that two uh two feet uh two cassette uh radio box I had. I'd record a guitar uh, line on, on one side and then move it over to the other side and re- record with some backing and so forth. So I might be giving my age a little bit there, but that's that's what I started off doing. And um, I enjoyed that. And it kind of it kind of uh, grew from there. I started uh, with the cassette and then I bought my first four track and started... Uh, and I, I bought the keyboards and started uh, making my own little uh, songs with that, and kind of kind of blossomed from there. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Blaz, what's your experience of working with Reggie like? It's been it's been pretty cool. Yeah, he's, um, he's cool. You know, we're working remotely though. We, yeah, we we, remotely. we we haven't met physically yet, so it's been through the beauty of the internet. We've uh, yeah. We've been working together. Uh, okay, are, are a lot of the artists that you've worked at worked with in the past like has it been pretty much remotely or like in terms of producing and stuff? Well, for me, it's, it's for me it's been a, mainly uh, remote uh, remote collaborations. Okay, yeah. Is it is it sometimes like difficult to like kind of you know get across like communication because of that or? Um... It can be, but. Um... What I usually do as a producer, I, I usually I usually handle the the musical part of it, and okay. whoever I'm collaborating with, I'm the type that I I like to let them, I'll give them like the artist full reign as far as, uh, and most of the the people that I go at, uh, I collaborate with are are lyricists and 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 singers like like Bless, she's she's uh, incredible. Uh-huh. She's a lyricist and she's a uh, and has a incredible vocals. So what I do is I I mainly just um, handle the mus the musical part and I and I send them a track to for them to lay down uh, you know vocals and lay down lyrics to. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, bless. How did you uh, get into singing? Oh well, it was very typical. Um, I I started singing when I was four, so. Uh, that's when I realized I had had a love for music. So it's no nothing 
no fabulous story or anything like that. I just <laughs> heard a song on the radio. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I was in the car with my parents and my brother, and Rufus and Chaka Khan's Sweet Thing came on the radio, and I sat there stuck the whole time. And I I remember thinking once it went off that I want to sound like that lady. <laughs> and yeah. that's kind of when it started. Yeah, Chaka Khan's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's my she's my number one idol. All right, she's, on. she's okay. number one. Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, are your family um, also anybody musician or artist as well, or a few of them? Um, not my immediate family, but I have um, cousins that uh, my uncle who who's passed away a few years ago, but he was a um, he was a career military guy. He was in the uh, in the services, and he was in the uh, army band. He was a percussionist, and all three of his children uh, are musical. The oldest boy is a was a drummer. He doesn't play now. Yeah. The middle the middle child, which is a, a girl, she played keyboard, and the youngest son played keyboard. So, I definitely have quite a few people who are musical in the family. Oh, uh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, just a question for both of you guys, but like, uh, how did you guys like connect? Good old Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had heard first old. heard uh Blaz had a single out called Black Girl Magic that I that I heard out there on uh Facebook and and I really loved it. And I and I thought hearing her voice that um she would fit perfectly with um, my sound, you know, the 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 way that I um hear music. Yeah. And I, I and I and I reached out to her um and she uh thank goodness um Responded right back, and we and it just was like magic. We just we just uh, connected up on on a few song on that song. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and to to tell us a little bit about the single that you guys worked on, because I know um that's that's like a you know pretty big deal for both of you guys too. So you know. Yeah, I mean, um, it was pretty easy. The music, typically, when I get music from a producer, um, and I listen to it the lyrics, the melody actually will start to, or a melody, I should say, will start to form in in my head. And I don't really sit down to write anything down. I usually go straight to the computer and press record. Yeah. And usually start that way. And if I like what I've started to record, then I will start to write things down. Because usually it's just the melody. It's not really lyrics. So I will actually hum to the music and come up with, with ideas that way. So that's basically how um, the, the, the lyrics and melody came for this song. Uh, okay. So. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. gotcha. How, how long did it take for you guys to, uh, you know, put this, like, song together? It was fast, actually. Yeah, it was pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I what think it was, what, like two weeks? Yeah, about two weeks or so, yeah. Yeah, it was. it was really... It was amazing. When she first sent me the rough draft of the vocals back, I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and, and I mean, as I, as I worked on it, I would send it to him to make sure that it was okay. And like, you know, is, do you like this? If not, I'll try to go back and, you know. But he was like, no, no, this is great. So, yeah, okay. it, it was like and she, she sang it in the exact cadence that I was thinking of in my head and and – and the the way that she sang it, it was it's just been, you know exactly the way I I heard envisioned in my mind that it would be going. So yeah, it was it was uh, pretty quick. It was like two weeks. It just clicked right away. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's awesome! Like I can't I can't wait to uh, you know hear you know hear to hear the single that you guys have. But um, also uh, I don't know. Are you guys are you guys planning on like you know meeting up in the future at all or? Yeah, I, I definitely uh, want to work with her some more on, on other things, and 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 she's actually got a a project that she's uh, uh, working on that uh, I hope to be able to help her with as well. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. No, that's, yes, that's... I, I I'm hoping that we will actually get to um, be in the studio together at some point. I'm not really sure when that that you know when that will be, but we definitely would like to do that. It has if to at happen. all possible. Yeah, it has to <laughs> <happen>. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, 
Uh, just a quick, just a question for Reggie. But uh, uh, what would you be able to tell tell us a little bit about the um, the Myrick Myra Media Group? Yeah, Myrick's Media Group is a a new um, company that I formed with my brother. That's going to be offering uh, production, music production services to artists. Um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be putting up a website that's going to have offer. Um, licensing for instrumentals for uh, singers and and lyricists and people who just generally are looking for quality uh, soulful music yeah and <clears throat> it's going to probably around june or july the site's going to go up but that's one of the reasons why i'm doing uh the single and also i'm doing a compilation album uh, yeah to promote my production skills and to make people aware of uh, my production and of Myrick's Media Group. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really, really cool. Well, it seems like you guys both have, like, something really exciting going on. But, uh, just you know, just before before we wrap up, I want to ask both of you guys, uh, is there anything you guys want to accomplish uh, before the end of the year? I definitely, first of all, want to finish my album. <laughs> that is the first thing that I want to do. Um and also after that, I would really like to do a um, a UK tour before the end of the before the new year. So I'm I'm toying around with that. But in order to do that, I have to finish my album. So the album is number one. Okay. I have to get that done. Yeah. 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 Ellen, what about you, Reggie? And for me, it's mainly getting uh, Myrix Media launched. And really um, getting a lot of exposure, um, getting folks uh, aware of the – because I'm going to be having um, not only me, but um, uh, I'm going to have at least four or five other producers working with me, that producers that I um, have worked with before and respect and so forth. Okay. That bring a lot of uh, – because um, the music that – what one thing about the music that I do, and I think that's – uh, <clears throat> this is what separates me from other producers is that I'm I'm actually a musician. I play several different instruments. Yeah. So <clears throat> if I bring a producer in, it's not going to be you know some guy that just pushes buttons. He's got to know how to play something and know some theory, and and he's got to have a different sound. So um, Myrick's Media Group, the songs that will be posted up will be songs like uh, the cookie cutter type things you hear on the radio right now. It's going to be and also we'll cater to artists as well. You know, we'll do custom pr- productions and so forth. So really, uh, my, one of my my main goal is to get it, that up and running uh, this year, and also to, like I said, to get a lot of exposure. And I'm hoping, like MCE is really catching a lot of buzz right now. <clears throat> it's really looking like it's going to be open some doors for both me and Bless. And um, that's what I'm, and that's exactly what I've been, I'm shooting for. So that's awesome. Sounds like you guys both have really solid plans, and I hope uh, y'all accomplish this, you know, by the end of the year. But uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, to Blaz and Reggie, thanks for joining us for the Urban Influencer Radio, and I wish you guys the best of luck. You know, so thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, for thank you very much for everything. All right, cool. Well, you guys have a good one. Okay, you too.
That was Man Crush Every Day by Blaze and produced by Reggie. Thank you for listening and don't forget to follow us on our social media. We'll end it right here. My name is Kazu and I'll see you again soon. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.